So about a week ago, I went to a yard sale and I found- All right, time for an adjustment here. Hold on. Okay. So about a week ago, I went to a yard sale and I saw this sitting on a lawn. And the old woman who sold this to me, she gave me her word that this had never been opened. Now, I saw the seal broken, and I saw some crust, some breadcrumbs, and some DNA. I had to take her word for it. Now, the model name is the Alcatel One Touch Pixie Glitz. I'd, I'd be willing to bet some of you had this device as one of your first smartphones back in around 2013. Now, I've never owned this, and that's why we're going to unbox this device and take a look at it for ourselves. This device was rolled out in 2013. In 2016, Alcatel was purchased by Nokia. The fact that this device opens like a book, it makes it that much better. I'm having major flashbacks. I used to see these more commonly in the grocery store. As you can see, it ran 4G and you could download over a million apps and more on the Google Play Store. And I got this for $3. Back in the day, it was retailing for 20. Absolutely nuts. Let's open this up and take a look inside. Disclaimer, I did start the device up and I opened everything in a TikTok video. So you guys are basically experiencing the same thing, but I want to show the unboxing experience. Specifically, the fact that uh, it has not one, not two, not three, or four manuals, but how many manuals? Five. Okay, we're at, oh my gosh, literally five manuals so far. And, oh my gosh. Okay, credit, credit, credit to Alcatel to make sure that their buyers are informed. Holy crap. Now, when I first opened this, it was very compact. It had the battery and the back plate and everything separate. Putting the phone together was actually a pretty pleasant experience. Uh, I wish phones were a bit more modular nowadays, but the, the construction is super easy. You snap the back plate off. And as you remember with these older devices, the back battery comes out easily and it already has a pre-installed SIM card. I don't care if you guys see the IMEI or the SIM card number, any of that, because I'm only going to be using this device for fun. So yeah, that's that. Pretty crazy, huh? Now, interestingly, although I have charged this already, when I first opened it, it still had charge in the battery. I wish phones were still like that. That would be fantastic. Here is an iPhone 11 to show comparison of the size. And here is a 2022 iPhone SE. So it's very small, it's very compact, and I actually kind of like it. Comparing to an SE 2022, it's even smaller. It's a, it's a really good sized phone. There is no fingerprint or face ID, but there is the unlock patterns. I remember these like it was yesterday. I think you can still use them on the devices, I just don't remember. I did the classic square motion. And uh, it takes about half a second for it to even unlock. The screen resolution is pretty pixelated. I'm zoomed in here, but it's honestly not that bad. Unless you're doing super zoom on an S20 FE, then I don't think it really matters. Now, going into the software, the phone is actually pretty cool. This runs Android 4.4.2. We're going to run the Easter egg right here. And as you can see, it is Android KitKat. A lot of people love this. I actually love KitKat as well. This is the charger. You could find a million of these in a thrift store if you go nowadays. It is a micro USB. And uh, I also wanted to show you guys something funny. And it was the ringtones of this dinosaur. These are the worst ringtones I've ever heard in my life. Oh, gosh. I, genie. Oh. Oh. Happy stroll. I personally have never even heard these. Oh gosh, it, it's not even like hearing an old Android ringtone. I don't even know where these came from. It, oh, but this one, this one got hits. Now, I did want to look at the camera app, and this was, to say the least, one of the most horrifying experiences I've ever had in my life. This looks like Napoleon Dynamite's girlfriend when he takes a photo of her, and he shows his friend Pedro. Yeah, this is what the camera resolution looks like. All right, let, let me show you guys. <laughs> All right, there's photo number one. Let's take a couple more. Oh gosh, that sound. All right, here's photo number two. What do you guys think? Comment below. I do have to say one of the coolest things on this device is swipe to text. 
works just as good as it does today, so that was pretty cool to see. Now, I also wanted to try to run the Google Play Store, and I cut out about 10 minutes of the Play Store loading, but eventually it actually did, which was a major surprise. What's also a bit interesting is it's running the same version of the Play Store as my S20 FE is running, and I'm unsure how that works but I'm impressed. Now, I did try to download Garena Free Fire. Everybody says, Hey, Garena Free Fire could run on a calculator. Well, I tried to download it, and in the end, it... Uh, let, me, let me show you what it did. Can't show you anything because it didn't do anything. But, for some reason, it did download Clash Royale, and I'm unsure why Clash Royale runs. But after about 20 minutes of loading, it does. And I think that's pretty cool. Sure, Clash Royale is not Fortnite, but I do have to say that it's impressive that it could run a up-to-date and newest version of a game. That's pretty cool in my book, and I think that's a win. As you can see here, it's actually running pretty decent without any lag. Now, one thing I was curious about was Maps, and unlike the Play Store, Google Maps is not running the newest version, because when I put an address in, it does something really weird. Instead of like pressing the start or the directions button, it only says review and when you go into review, it does exactly that and you can't really start the directions. It's also super, super delayed and it's hard to navigate. It takes about five minutes for a route to map. So at the end of the day, you're probably not going to be able to use hardly any of the applications you could get on this phone. I was hopeful that Brawl Stars was going to download and run, but uh, it was pretty much the same as Free Fire. I tried to download it. After about 20 minutes, it would not fully download, and I considered that one a loss as well. Lastly, I tried to use YouTube, but it was the same thing, but it was a versioning issue. I could not download the newest version of YouTube to use, but the phone overall is pretty cool. I'm going to continue to tinker with it, and if you guys have any ideas of things I should try, please comment below. Last thing, one of my longtime viewers, Graham Helberg, sent me an iPhone 11 and an iPhone X that are iCloud locked. If you guys have any cool ideas of things I should try with these devices, comment below, and I just might end up doing it. Anyways, thanks for watching and subscribe. See you guys next time. Bye.